Push That Rock with Simpson Mad. Polynomials are functions that look like this, where the coefficients, these are the coefficients, are rational numbers, but we're going to deal just probably with integer uh, numbers. So these are integers. And this highest power on x, though, by the way, these are also uh, integer, uh, whole numbers, n, n minus 1, and so forth, down to where you don't have uh, an exponent. So, and the highest one is called the degree, and the coefficient to the variable with the highest uh, power is called the leading coefficient. So anyway, polynomials look like this. You've already dealt with uh, lines and quadratics, but there are higher degree polynomials like this one. And we have a lot of questions about higher degree polynomials like this one. This is a third degree polynomial. Third degree polynomials are called cubics. But anyway, it's a third degree polynomial. And we want to ask questions like, what does it look like? What does the graph look like? What is the y-intercept? What are, because it's going to be more than one, what are its x-intercepts? How does it behave as x goes to infinity? As x gets really large, how does it behave? And how does it behave? And when I say it, I mean the, the cubic, its graph. How does the cubic behave? The third degree polynomial behave as x goes to negative infinity. As x gets really small. And the way you answer these questions is you investigate. For instance, a y-intercept is where is x is zero and there's some y value. So if we want to know where it crosses this y-axis where x is zero, we plug in zero. You investigate. I, I could teach you, you know, rules and you could memorize them, but if you investigate and find it on your own, you'll figure it out. Well, look, all these terms are zero. Oh, we're going to be left with six. Is that going to happen every time? Is it always going to be this number out here that doesn't have an x? Will the y-intercept always be the number that doesn't have an x? If you put in zero for all the x's, will you always be left with this number out here? Hmm, that's interesting. So anyway, on this particular one, we found it's six. So it crosses at six. That's how you answer these questions you investigate. What about as x goes to infinity? What's the behavior there? Well, we'll investigate. We'll get some x values out and we'll get them large, successfully larger. And this is not a very close to infinity, but we'll try. So put in two, we get eight here. But here it's 2 squared is 4, so we have 2 times 4, 8. So 8 minus 8, well, that's 0. Put 2 here, we have a negative 10 plus 4. That's a, uh, I mean, plus 6, that's a negative 4. Put in 4. 4 cubed is 64. 4 squared is 16. If you double 16, you have 32. 64 minus 32 is 32. So this is 32. Put 4 right here. We take off 20, so we're at 12, and this is about 18. Put in 10. What are we going to get 10? Well, that's going to be big. 10 cubed is in the thousands. If I square it, it's only in the hundreds. So I have 1,000 minus 200 minus 50 plus 6. I mean, that's meaningless. So it's 1,000 minus 200. So we're in the 800s. Back up 50. So we're in the 700s. And it's 744, I think. But I mean, the thing is, you're up in the hundreds. You're near 1,000. What if I put in 100? Well, 100 cubed is in the millions, but if you square 100, you're only in the 10,000s. When you start taking away, you have a million, and you take away a measly 20,000, <laughs> you're, you're still near the millions. And so what? I take off another 500 and a six. So we're basically in the millions. So what's, what the question was, what happens to the cubic as the x values go to infinity? Well, what happens is its outputs get larger and larger. That's what happens. So as x goes to infinity, the y values are clearly going to get huge. That's what happens. You investigate. Okay? All right, so let's investigate what happens when x goes to negative infinity. Put in a negative 1 here. Let's see. If you put in a negative 1, you cube it, you get a negative 1. But a negative 1 squared is positive, but this is negative. So I have a negative 1 minus 2. Uh, so that's negative 3. But a negative 1 times 5 is a positive 5. So I think I had negative 3 and 5, so that's 2 plus 6. So uh, I've already lost track. You better, you know what? I better just do it. <laughs> I couldn't in my head. I was trying to keep up, but I couldn't do it. So we have a negative 5 times a negative 1 and then plus 6. So this is a negative 1. 
uh, minus 2, because remember, negative 1 squared is a positive 1, so that's minus 2. This becomes plus 5 plus 6. So here we have 11, but we're, we're taking off 3, so it's 8. Okay? What if I put in a negative 10? Oh my gosh, that's 1,000. And then, sure, if I put a negative 10 here, you square it, you get a positive 100. So I have a negative 1,000, negative 1,000. But I'm taking away 2 times 100, so I'm taking away a mere 200. Then I'm adding back in, because a negative times this negative 5 would be 50, so I'm adding back in 56. In other words, it's near a negative 1,000. What happens if I put in a negative 100? Well, I'm going to get negative million. <laughs> I don't think any of this is going to matter. Now, this is so big. If I had 100 in and I squared, I'm only in the 10,000. So this is a mere 20,000 compared to a million. This is just negative million. So what's happening? As x goes to negative infinity, the y values are also going to negative infinity. So you investigate. You just answer the question yourself. It doesn't take that much work. So what have we learned so far? Well, let's look at some of these points. We learned that at negative 1, it's 8. I'll get out a red pen. So negative 1, it's up 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. We learned that at negative 10, it's way off the charts. It's way down here. So we'll try to keep that in mind. It's way down here when you get to negative 10. Uh, and negative 100, it keeps going down there. Let's see, at 2, it was negative 4. So we're about right here. Oh yeah, zero, I think we said it was six, two, four, six, okay. Uh, four, it was 18, so at four, it's way up here somewhere. Oh, I don't know, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, um, at 10, it's off the charts. So it's, go it's just going off the charts from there. It's just going off the charts from there. Uh, so can I tell what, the, what it looks like with these points? Well, not really. I don't know that I have enough points. Maybe we should do a little more investigation. That's what you should do. So one thing that we notice is, look this negative. Pause to neg, back to pause. Right in here, there might be some x-intercepts. <gasps> yeah, it's, it's coming down. It looks like it's coming down and then going up. So let's try some numbers between 0 and 2. Well, there's an obvious number to try. 1. 1 minus 2 is a negative 1. Minus 5 is a negative 6, plus 6 is 0. So we found a root right there. Let's try 3. Well, 3 cubed is 27. Uh, 3 squared is 9, and if you double it, you get 18. Uh, 5 times 3 is 15, and then we have plus 6. So 27 minus 18, that's a negative 9. Um, 3 cubed, see, 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. So that gives me 27. 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18. So that is definitely 1, 9 right there. 9 minus uh, 15 is a negative 6 plus 6. That's 0. Okay, so now we already did 4. It was 18. So we found the zeros in between those where we thought they might be. Well, that was lucky. I mean... I picked one that had whole number uh, zeros. It might have fractional zeros. You might not get that lucky. You might have to work a little harder than I just had to do. But you know, I don't want the video to be forever, so. Now, what about over here? It's down here, but it has to come up here. So clearly it crosses again over here somewhere. So you might investigate further. Where does it cross? You might investigate further. You know, it, this was six and this was uh, eight, so maybe it crosses, maybe it just gets bigger. Maybe at negative two, it's going to be even bigger. Let's find out. See, negative two cubed is a negative eight. Negative two squared is positive four, but my, times a negative two is a negative eight, so there's a negative 16. A negative two times a, posi a negative five is a positive 10 plus six. Oh, look, negative 16, positive 16, zero. Oh, we found another zero right here already. Oh, so it's coming up. Somewhere it turns around. I don't know where. Somewhere it turns around. I don't know that it's this point. I, it, could, it could turn around right here. You know, I don't know where it turns around. But I think we can generally see that it's going to look something like this. 
you know, so the graph is clearly something like that. That's what it looks like. And we did it with investigation. Math made simple, Simpson math.